लिक्विड फंड ओवरनाइट फंड गिल्ड फंड डायनामिक बॉन्ड फंड बैंकिंग एंड पी एस यू डेट फंड ऑल राइट ऑल राइट आई एम टू स्टॉप नाउ इफ यू डोंट नो वट दीज आर देन यू आर एट द राइट प्लेस दीज आर साउंड द नेम्स दैट वी हैव गिवन टू द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ डेट म्यूचुअल फंड दैट आर अवेलेबल टू द रिटेल इन्वेस्टर्स ऑब्वियसली विद नेम्स सच एज दीज इट्स गोइंग टू बी लिटिल डिफिकल्ट फॉर इन्वेस्टर्स टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट एक्जैक्टली दे शुड बी इन्वेस्टेड इन हे गाइज वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल If you're new here, my name is Sharon Hegde. I'm a management consultant turned product manager, and in this channel, we explore the incredible world of finance and how it can help us better our lives. In this video, I'm going to talk about the various kinds of debt mutual funds that are available to the retail investors out there. I'm going to also talk about the various risks associated with each of these debt mutual funds. The risks that I'm going to talk about are interest rate risk and the credit risk. So guys if I've already used a lot of foreign terms then you should check out this other video that I have made wherein I explain everything you need to know about a debt mutual fund guys it is so simple that you don't need to have any financial background to understand that video I'll put a link to that video in the description and I'll also put a link to that video somewhere here seriously guys check that out first and come back I'm not going anywhere I'll be right here I'll wait before we go any further I would like to tell you that I have put time stamps in the video below so that you can navigate to that section of the video that you are interested in debt funds as an asset class have evolved over the years into several different categories there are more than 15 categories that are out there now this might seem like a lot many times we look at the names of these funds and instinctively decide that this is not for us i don't understand this it's too risky i'm just going to stick with my plain old fixed deposits and savings account don't worry guys in this video i'm going to make it that simple for you to understand each of these different categories Before we dive into each of these different debt mutual funds let me tell you that regardless of what debt mutual fund it is it can always be evaluated on two main parameters number one is the maturity period of the bonds in the debt mutual fund that is the expiry time of the bonds so what is a bond you may ask bond is essentially the debt of a company that you may purchase so you give your money to the company and the company in return will pay you a fixed monthly interest on the money that you have given them and the end of the tenure they will return the entire money back to you that is how a bond works so the important thing to note here is that higher the maturity period of the bonds higher is the returns offered but please remember that the interest rate offered for a bond is usually fixed for the entire period so higher the maturity period higher is the interest rate risk what is the interest rate risk let me give you an example let's say you give 10 lakhs of your rupees to a company in return for 6% interest rate payable monthly Let's say six months down the line, the bank FD rates have now increased to seven percent. You obviously do not want to be stuck with the six percent investment. So what you would do in this situation? What you would typically do is you would find another interested buyer out there and tell him, "Hey man, look, I have ten lakhs of an investment in a company, and they're paying me six percent. I know the bank FDs are giving you seven percent, but I'm willing to give you this ten lakhs for nine lakh and fifty thousand." So now this buyer might be intrigued. But remember you had paid 10 lakhs for this bond but you're selling it for 9 lakh and 50000 so there is a temporary short term loss for you but then you will take this 9 lakh 50000 and invest in the FTs at 7% interest rate this entire transaction that i just talked about is done by the mutual fund manager but as you can see over a short term period the value of your investment might drop and this is exactly what the interest rate risk is so in summary higher the maturity period of the bond higher is the interest rate risk what if the maturity period was too less let's say one month then the mutual fund manager would just wait it out and then after it matures he would then invest in the newer bonds which are issued at a higher interest rate the second parameter that every debt mutual fund can be evaluated upon is the kind of companies that they purchase the debt from we all know that all companies are not made the same there are some companies which have a very healthy financial background and other companies which are sort of on the risky side the risk rating of these companies are provided by companies such as crisel and based on these risk ratings the interest rate also varies if a mutual fund is invested primarily in government issued bonds then it is considered to be of a very high credit rating because the government would never default and if it does you probably have other things to worry about on the other end of the spectrum there are high risk companies which are also issuing bonds so now with that out of the way let's get deep dive into the different kinds of debt mutual funds available out there first off we have overnight fund as the name suggests this mutual fund invests in only those bonds which have a maturity period of 1 month and the kind of companies which can issue these kind of bonds are very highly rated so as you can see this is one of the safest kind of debt mutual fund that is available out there 
it ranks low on both the interest rate risk as well as the credit risk. Next off, we have liquid funds. This again is a very similar kind of debt mutual fund. The only difference is that the maturity period of the bonds is limited to 91 days or somewhere about 3 months. So guys, if you have some excess cash which you might be needing on an immediate basis, let's say 2 to 3 months from now, then it might be a good idea to invest this money in overnight funds and liquid funds. They provide better returns than a savings account and are on par with that of a fixed deposit. The advantage here is that you can withdraw the money for no penalty within 2 days. Whereas in a fixed deposit, you might get a penalty for withdrawing earlier. Next off, we have ultra short duration fund. These funds invest in bonds such that the average maturity period of the overall fund is hovering somewhere between 3 to 6 months. So the next few funds that I'm going to talk about are very similar to ultra short duration fund. But the only difference is the maturity period. So we have a low duration fund where the maturity period is 6 to 12 months. We have a short duration fund in which the maturity period is 1 to 3 years. Medium duration fund 3 to 4 years. Medium to long duration fund 4 to 7 years. And finally long duration fund greater than 7 years. So the only difference you can see here is that the maturity period keeps on increasing. And as you are aware, as the maturity period increases, the interest rate risk also increases. So next off, we have a very interesting kind of debt fund called a dynamic bond fund. So what makes it so interesting? So all the debt funds that we talked about so far have sort of a fixed maturity period. For example, an ultra short bond fund have a maturity period of 3 to 6 months. No more, no less. But what if the fund manager had the flexibility to change the maturity period from as little as 3 months to as high as 7 years? So that's what makes a dynamic bond fund so interesting. But why would the fund manager would want to do this? Let us try to understand that with the help of an example. Let us say that the fund manager has the intuition that the RBI is going to increase the interest rate. In this scenario, what he would ideally want to do is purchase those bonds which have a very low maturity period. Because if he purchases a long term bond, he would be stuck with bonds which are growing at a lower interest rate. Whereas the interest rate in the open market is continuously increasing. On the flip side, let's say that he thinks that the RBI is going to decrease the interest rate. In this scenario, he would want to shore up on long term bonds. Because as the interest rate in the open market continues to decrease, his bonds are still growing at a higher interest rate. So there is higher demand in the market for his bonds. Now so far, this might sound like the most ideal kind of debt fund out there. But please remember that the fund manager is taking a risky bet as to what the RBI is going to do. And if his bet turns out to be wrong, then the performance might be bad. So the dynamic bond fund is ideal for savvy investors who understand the strategy of the fund manager and all the risks associated with it. Next off, we have the Guild Fund, a funny name for a very simple concept. What it simply means is that it invests 80% of its investment corpus in bonds issued by the government. The government usually issues bonds at a 10 year maturity period. Like I've told you before, higher the maturity period, higher is the interest rate risk. But at the same time, the default risk of these bonds are very low. Because if the government wanted more money, it could simply print more. And if the government is unable to honor its debts, we probably have bigger things to worry about. Next off, we have a corporate bond fund. So this fund invests 80% of its investment corpus in the corporate companies of our country. So now these companies obviously have a higher default risk than the government of India. So the interest rate offered by these bonds are also higher. Also, the maturity period is somewhere about 3 to 5 years. Now let's talk about the banking and PSU debt fund. So these kind of funds invest 80% of their investment corpus in banking and PSU companies. Now PSU companies are those public sector companies which are backed by the government. So the tendency of default here is very low. And on the other hand, we have banking companies which offer a higher interest rate for the bonds that they issue. So as you can see here, we have the best of both worlds here as far as risk and returns are concerned. Next off, we have credit risk fund. As the name suggests, these are those kind of debt funds which invest 65% of its investment corpus in high risk rated companies. High risk rated companies offer much higher interest rate for the simple fact that they have a higher risk rating. So here again, the performance of the fund is highly dependent on the expertise of the fund manager. So if a fund manager feels that a certain high risk rated company is wrongly rated, then he may invest in it, hoping that the risk rating might come down in the years going by. Credit risk funds are typically meant for savvy investors who understand the strategy of the fund manager and the risks associated with it. And finally, we have the floater fund. So these are those kind of debt mutual funds which invest in floating rate instruments. What are floating rate instruments? Let's say that there is a bond which does not offer a fixed interest rate 
but instead offers a variable rate which is pegged to some other external instrument. Let's say it is pegged to the SBI FD rate which is offering 5.5% and this bond which are interested in offers 2% above the SBI FD rate, so 7.5%. Let's say that 3 months down the line the SBI FD rate rises to 6%. Now the interest rate offered by the bonds would become 6 plus 2 that is 8% and let's say a further 2 months down the line the SBI FD rate falls to 4%. Now the new interest rate offered by the bond would be 4 plus 2 that is 6%. So as you can see here, the interest rate offered by the bond is pegged to the SBI FD rate. So the interest rate cannot be guaranteed. As you must have already figured out, the interest rate risk of this bond fund is zero because it is not affected by the external interest rate because it always dynamically changes as the external market conditions changes. So guys, now let's look at a pictorial representation of all these different debt funds vis a two different risks that is the interest rate risk and the credit risk. Let's start plotting with the two axes for the two different kinds of risks. First is the credit rate risk and the second is the interest rate risk. So let's start plotting with the safest funds that is the overnight fund and the liquid fund. Both these funds have very low credit risk and interest rate risk. Now let's plot the guilt fund which has a very high interest rate risk but almost zero credit risk. The credit risk fund which has a very high credit risk. Now let's plot the other funds with respect to the extremities that we have defined on our graph. So we have the ultra short bond fund, the low duration fund, the short duration fund, the medium duration fund, medium to long duration fund and finally the long duration fund. So as you can see here, as the maturity period increases, the risk also increases. Now let's plot the other funds, namely the dynamic bond fund, the corporate fund, the banking and PSU debt fund, and finally the floater fund. Since the floater fund has zero interest rate risk, it sits all the way in the bottom. Now if we assume conservative risk on interest rate risk parameter and credit risk parameter, we arrive at something that I would like to call the safe square for beginner investors. So a beginner investor should restrict himself within this safe square. If he or she would like to invest outside the safe square, then he should exercise some caution. So guys, with that we come to the end of this video. If you guys felt like you got some value out of it, then absolutely smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you can get more videos like this delivered to you as soon as I make them. And I'll see you in the next one.